Okay, so we might as well start, I think. People will arrive as, as, as time goes on. So uh, today then, as part of the, the ongoing uh, uh, um, different sort of uh, topics that are covered uh, throughout the year, we're looking at uh, digital literacy at the moment in, uh, it, as part of this month. So April is Digital Literacy Month. And as well as this talk, um, there's going to be a discussion next Friday. So Bajie will join us again uh, as a follow up. Uh, but there's also a course running. Um, it's probably almost finished now, I think, the course uh, in terms of it, its availability. But uh, there, there has been uh, some activity. And if you're a member of the Telegram group and we'll give you a link to the Telegram group, um, if you're not a member of the Telegram group uh, so that you can join in, there was we had some discussion about the topic. Um, uh, last week as well. So without too much more uh, talking from me, I'm going to pass you over to Abadje, uh, who's got plenty of slides to go out today. Uh, so we look forward to, to hearing his, his presentation. So over to you, Abadje. Okay, good evening, uh, change agents and professionals. Uh, my noble colleagues, I count this a great privilege. I want to really specially thank uh, British Council uh, for featuring me uh, to take the topic digital literacy and teaching English, exploring what teachers need to know. Uh, for me, it's a day with destiny and uh, I, I trust God to give a very good account of, uh, of my experience. I want to appreciate uh, the management and the leadership of, um, of Teaching English Africa, um, Mr. Diop and uh, Professor, Professor Gary of Manchester. I, I, I appreciate you for your mentorship all along and uh, the vetting process. I, I learned a lot. It was quite uh, an experience I would, I would live lifelong ongoing with. And so we start right away. Uh, like we all know, the title is Digital Literacy and Teaching English, exploring what teachers, uh, language teachers particularly, need to know. Uh, this is a, a brief introduction about myself. I, I, I have a master's degree from uh, University of Joss in education. Uh, currently, I am on an exchange program under the British Council Connecting Classroom with Lamwen High School, Newport, Wales, and it's been an amazing experience. And it's in the heat of that passion. I hope to bring that passion to be in education, to the desire to improve the quality of education that has led uh, them to participate in this exchange program, allowing me to gain new insight and knowledge from uh, this for my fellow British counterparts. So uh, we quickly look at the objectives, what we intend to achieve at the end of this presentation. Uh, we, at the end of the presentation, we hope that uh, the English teachers who are participating in this presentation today will be able to use uh, the social media for teaching and learning in the classroom, uh, for reading and for listening skills then to be aware of the potential risks as well and dangers associated with using digital tools uh, teaching their students how to be responsible digital citizens improving how to use digital tools uh, and platforms ethically and responsibly now to help their students develop effective communication skills in digital contexts, such as email, uh, social media, and online chat as well. And then to be able to share their phone screens and audio to the laptop, Bluetooth speakers, projectors, et cetera, to show their students pictures, charts, di diagram, uh, videos, podcasts, audio, to illustrate the learning contents uh, using YD screen sharing or mirroring uh, to share Miracast or Chromecast. So these are our expectation today that by the time we're, we're done with this 
will be able to uh, every teacher will be able to uh, do what I've just highlighted. Now, when you're talking about the shape of the future of education, you as a teacher and as an educator, you wear so many hats, so many hats. You are both a teacher, you are both a coach, you are both a colleague, you are both a collaborator, you are an innovator, and even a student. So you crave new ideas, and then the latest tools and exciting experiences, but your skin is full. So basically, uh, British Council has been able to highlight the core skills uh, to be six. And as we all know, we have uh, citizenship, we have uh, creative and imagination, uh, creativity and imagination, we have critical thinking and problem solving. We have uh, digital literacy, which is what we're looking at today. We have collaboration and communication. And then we have student leadership and personal development. So I would like to hear from uh, all the attendees here today. I'd like you to uh, please type your thoughts in the chats area. I'd like to hear your thoughts. I'd like to uh, see your chats. Uh, what do you think? Uh, in your own context, what do you think that digital literacy is? And what are the different uh, components of digital literacy? I'd like to take this short time to, uh, to read. Uh, I, I'll be expecting to see your charts. Um, from what I can see, uh, I can see VT. Uh, VT is saying that he teaches English. And, oh, okay. You are, these are basic uh, introduction. But I'd like to see your charts now. What are your, what are your views? about or what do you think about digital literacy? Let the chat come on. So just head down to the chat, look just down, you see the chat button uh, and then you click on it and, and let me hear your, your views. Okay. Oh, nice to hear from you, Emmy. Good evening from Ethiopia. I can see BG talking about awareness of digital tools and, and their uses. Uh, okay, so that, that's lovely. He said awareness of digital tools and their uses. So let me hear more. Okay, uh, AD from digital, he said digital literacy is a way or means of teaching uh, literacy using these digital methods. Oh, great, 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 great. wonderful view. I can also hear uh, 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 Ari. Ari. Ari said digital tools for teaching and learning. Oh, that's great. So CA said, good evening. I teach English studies in senior secondary school from Nigeria. Oh, that's great, CA. So can we hear your view about what digital literacy is in your own context and what are the components? Um, I'm still here to hear uh, views about the components. Uh, one said it takes, uh, SF said it takes about, it talks about teaching English using digital methods. Oh, okay. Uh, Emmy said able to use our technology in teaching okay uh, why we are mindful also about the time these are wonderful contributions i think uh, uh it's if okay i can see mm from uh, he said good evening from south africa wow wonderful nice to hear uh, he said digital literacy is empowering learners using digital methods oh that's great wonderful wonderful these are our wonderful views so let's quickly look at uh, our, our slides. So, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, what digital literacy is basically, we know that digital literacy is the ability, number one, to access, then to manage, to understand, to integrate, to communicate, to evaluate, and create information safely and uh, appropriately through digital technologies for employment, decent jobs, entrepreneurship, etc. So uh, that is just a summary of what digital literacy uh, is. And then we go ahead to look at the components. Uh, I, I I didn't hear uh, about the components from the chat, but basically. Uh, we have about eight components of the digital literacy. 
you talk about creativity, you talk about critical thinking and evaluation, you talk about cultural and social understanding, you talk about collaboration, you talk about uh, to find and select information, effective communication, you talk about e-safety is one of the components. And finally, you talk about the functional skills. So this is a summary of uh, what digital literacy components are. And uh, we head straight quickly to uh, digital literacy in language. What can it support? What are the things that uh, digital literacy can support for a language teacher uh, in the 21st century? Now, number one, it hands to the teacher acquisition of the 21st century skills. Like we have critical thinking, the ability for the teacher to, uh, to think both inside and outside the box and prof profile solution uh, in the classroom. Then it hands to the language teacher analytical skills, uh, your ability to analyze and give a, a critical an analysis. Then it, it hands the digital teacher uh, problem solving skills. It hands to the teacher collaboration. It hands to the teacher communication skills. It hands to the teacher creativity and innovation. And then it hands to the teacher digital and information literacy. Uh, it hands to the teacher technology as uh, service skills. So basically, these are uh, what digital literacy stands to support or to uh, hand to the teacher, to the language teacher. And uh, these skills are basically uh, the 21st century skills, which I believe uh, every teacher should have to be very effective. Then we quickly look at why upskilling of a language teacher. Why is it necessary for a language teacher to upskill? Just like we are all here today to see how we can uh, improve on our CPD, our continuous professional development. You see, uh, upskilling of the language teacher is crucial. Now, we live in a time of great change and tremendous educational potentials. Uh, we need to provide better tools that give every student better learning opportunity. We need to amplify the creativity of students, teachers and administrators. We need to create more effective classrooms and maximize learning time. We need to also acquaint language teachers about jobs of the future that will be automated and uh, taken over by robots and AI, artificial intelligence. So uh, it's also necessary to prepare students for jobs of the future, smart and portable uh, devices. Then it's also necessary that as teachers, we reconcile the gap that is between abstract and concrete learning. So now preparing students for jobs of the future. Uh, Number one, artificial intelligence. It, we've so, uh, artificial in intelligence is integrated uh, be, virtually into most of, of our, our private lives. M most of us with smartphones as teachers, you see artificial intelligence, even in the camera that you use to snap your selfie or that you use to snap, it, 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 can, it can adequately you know, uh, uh, calculate, you know, uh, the, 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 the quantity of light, if there's enough light or there's low light, the camera can automatically adjust itself to fit in, to be able to, you know, to give a quality image. So we see artificial intelligence uh, in, our, in our computing. We see artificial intelligence as well in most of the application, the apps that we use. So it's necessary that as a 21st century teacher in preparing our students, it's necessary that uh, we know that artificial intelligence is, forms a, a pivotal uh, aspect of the jobs of the future. Then we, we talk about medical researchers. Researches have gone so advanced these days that without you having to tear uh, or open up an individual, you know, Robots can, you know, find an entry into the body and carry out surgeries and come out. We hear of laparoscopy. We have uh, all manner of uh, surgeries these days 
that uh, can be carried out safely and effectively by uh, robots. So as language teachers uh, looking at the future, it is necessary that uh, we, uh, we acquaint ourselves with these jobs of the future. You talk about business intelligent expert. You see expert that can, you know, forecast to, know, to, uh, uh, to give accurate uh, analysis or, or about how a business should proceed. And then we, we talk about advanced analytical specialists. We'll talk about autonomous transportation uh, engineers because uh, these days we have flying cars and um, who, who are they? We need to prepare engineers who will be fixing those cars, who will be, you know, servicing those cars. Uh, we talk about cybersecurity specialists, uh, a, a lot of uh, 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 cybercrime. Uh, and then it's necessary that as, as teachers, we prepare our students for these jobs of the future. Uh, uh, this link is a YouTube link. Uh, because of time, I, I would have showed us about the link. What I'll do probably I copy it and drop it on the on the chat so you can uh, have access to it. You can have access to it so that um okay let's see if you can just look at it briefly. This is the first prototype of the uh, uh, flying car, and then these kinds of uh, innovations will require us training our students to be able to service these cars in the future. This is what the future is going to look like. And then we would need personnel uh, to, to prepare our students as 21st century teachers to prepare them uh, to be able to fit in into what the future looks like. So because of time, I will quickly uh, go back. Um, we, 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 we'll just pause it. So when you have time, you can also search it out on YouTube. And then um, while we continue with our, with our, our lecture. So like I was saying, we talked about um, drone programmers as well. Our drone is in the in thing right now. We have drone both for civilian lives and both for military lives. We've seen the, the, art, the art, outcome of um, the war in um, Ukraine. We saw the role drone played over, uh, is playing currently. And a drone is actually the future. It's actually the future, both in, in our private lives and we need to uh, prepare our students for these kinds of jobs of the future. People that will fix these drones, people that will service these drones, people uh, that, that, that will be in big entrepreneurs of these drones. We talk about data science. Uh, you talk about uh, blockchain technology. We hear of, uh, we hear of uh, blockchain technology taking over. Uh, the future of banking and financial institution, even though a lot of countries are still contesting it. But I believe uh, uh, all, after all being said and done, eventually, that's what the future is going to look like. It, it's the blockchain technology. Then you will talk about alternative energy solution, talking about clean energy. Uh, and it's part of, uh, I think, the, the sustainable developmental goals of the UN that uh, by yes, in the future to come, we shouldn't be using uh, fossil fuels. We shouldn't be using, uh, we should be using re uh, uh, renewable energies. And, and, uh, and then we we'll eventually have to walk past uh, the non-renewable. Then uh, you talk about the robotics. Eventually, robotics is going to take over some of our jobs as teachers as well. Uh, where learning would go past the classroom and then uh, people can actually educate themselves by buying robots that would take them through uh, the primary school, <laughs> the secondary school, and to the university, to their institution eventually. This is the future we're talking about here. And as a teacher, it's necessary you, re you, you prepare yourself for this future and prepare your students as well. Uh, you talk about self-driving cars, uh, engineering, like we've just seen a while ago, and the flying cars, etc. Then quickly, because of time, we quickly look at uh, the implication for our language teachers. What is going to be the implication for language teachers? Now, number one, there's a new demand for knowledge economy in 
implying a different role for language teachers, particularly. So uh, language teachers will need to acquire new skills and become learners themselves with the aim of improving teachers' practice and the life chances of students. Then the focus is not on ICT, but the integration of technology and education with margin views on pedagogy, curriculum development, and education management. Then language teachers should stop teaching because that's what we see these days in our classes and start facilitating. Okay, now let's look at uh, what digital uh, citizenship looks like. Uh, this is an excerpt uh, gotten from Mentimeter. Uh, people's view that when we talk about digital citizenship, what comes into your mind? As you can see on the screen, you will see uh, someone, uh, some people were of the view that it's technology. I think if you look at the writings, apart from the digital citizenship, uh, you can see some, I think the biggest write up there is use. You can see use there. You can see technology also taking a chunk of the size of the font. You see information, you see communication, you see responsibilities. Then we see rights, right? So, and on and on and on. If you look at it uh, uh, carefully, you will see that there are a lot of words that come in when you talk about digital citizenship. You see learning, uh, you see development, you see uh, literacy, you see uh, problems, uh, you see technology, wellness, uh, media, and so on and on and on. Because of time, I won't bore us with that, but when you're talking about uh, digital citizenship, uh, you're talking about one thing, that teaching teachers and students how to be responsible, safe, and effective on the internet and digital devices. So they will continue these practices beyond the classroom. We should be mindful as our actions online and offline as well. So these are centuries are uh, digital citizenship. Now we look at also digital safety and security. Like you can see from uh, the background, you see someone who did uh, showing um, security uh, uh, consciousness or something. So, and then you talk about digital citizenship is all about one thing as well, that uh, teaching teachers how to be responsive and effective on the internet, um, to be safe on the internet and the digital device so they continue to use these practices beyond. Uh, so that's, I think there's a, there's a repetition with the slide or so. Okay, sorry, just a moment. Okay, so we're talking about uh, digital safety and security. It's simply talking about how safe and responsible and effective one can be on the internet or on the devices. So uh, they can continue to practice beyond the classroom. And then whether you're offline or online, uh, safety is important. So we look at uh, as well, digital communication. Now, digital communication, language teachers need to teach their students how to be responsible, do, responsible digital citizens, including how to use digital tools. Simple things like email, uh, like the social media, uh, like messaging and platforms ethically and responsibly even something as simple as engaging your students to read text on the web page from your laptop is considered digital communication. So uh, I would like to uh, we'll, we'll look at quickly the learning outcomes. Uh, these are learning outcomes from uh, my fellow noble colleagues that have sampled their opinion. Number one, one person said, that he loves using online tools like search engines to find informations 
He said, I can use this information to help solve problems and make decisions in the classroom. Since more words are added daily to the dictionary. So that's what, that's his own outcome about using uh, digital tools. And another person said that digital literacy tools help him to improve uh, his learning beyond just reading books or listening to the teacher that it gives him so many more different ways to learn. You know, that gives our students more option. So uh, another person said that I can, I, I can use digital literacy tools to work with fellow students and even produce or publish or share information and knowledge with others. So that's another person's view. And uh, another person said that he uses um, the Bluetooth, small Bluetooth speaker in the classroom for his students to listen to pre-recorded audio or podcast in order to enhance their listening skills. And um, you see, these are, these are uh, very, very remarkable learning outcomes that I think as teachers, as uh, language teachers, we can you know, carry these uh, values to our classroom and see how this can be replicated. Um, then now I would like to uh, would like us to look at what technologies can language teachers integrate in your classroom? What technology can language teachers integrate in the classroom? When, when in terms of uh, correlating data or data analysis, you will need a scientific calculator. Uh, you will need, as teachers, you will need smartphones, you will need tablets or iPads, to whichever one that is accessible to you. You will need uh, netbooks or laptops or desktop computers or Bluetooth speakers. I think for a 21st century uh, language teacher, these devices, uh, technologies, uh, whichever one that is accessible to you and to, to, the, to, to, to the conditioning of your location. Uh, you talk about electronic boards, uh, multimedia projectors, television and VCRs, sound recorders, digital cameras, printers, uh, YD for screen sharing, which is the wireless display. Now, I would like to hear at this point, I would like to hear from you. I want you to type your idea in the chat box. Uh, I, I would like you to head straight to the chat box. I'd like to hear from you. Uh, what kind of technologies do you, as a language teacher, use in your classroom currently? I'd like to hear from you. So let's look at, let me, let me hear from you. Head to the chat box right away. Let me see uh, what are the uh, what are coming in there. Okay, one said that uh, we use this in my classroom. Uh, okay, uh, but he didn't specify what it is. Oh, okay. Uh, Emmy said he uses projector. Oh, that's great. Uh, projector is accessible to you. That's great. Uh, you you said they use virtual classroom like Google Classroom. Oh, that's great. Uh, Ari uh, said they use projector, television, and tablets. Wow, that's great. That's great. That's encouraging. Uh, let me hear more views. Uh, let, me, uh, ask, let me hear more views. Can you head to the chat box? Let me hear. Uh, what do you use? Okay, another person said, you, you said they use IWB and tabs. What, what, what could that be? IWB and tabs. Can you a little bit expatiate? What could that, that, that really is? Oh, another person said they use Android. IP said they use Android. CA said I use, um, uh, I, OM said they use projectors. Oh, that's great. Uh, SF said we use laptops, television, PCs, and uh, UU. Uh, VT said they use laptops. Oh, that's great. Uh, OM said they use Bluetooth speakers as well. Wow, that's great. That's encouraging. In VM said they use projectors, TV, laptops, and whiteboards. Wow, that's great. Good accessibility. Then JL said they use projectors. Uh, AD said they use laptops, TV, IWD. What could that, what's the IWD and phone? Okay, then DM said they use smart boards too. Oh, that's great. That's encouraging. Um, because of time, uh, these are wonderful contributions. I can see uh, uh, quite a range wide range of uh, technologies that are accessible to you. 
and that's encouraged. Oh, okay, I can see OM said they use interactive boards too. Oh, that's great to be able to afford that. Uh, having access to these technologies have a lot to do with the future of learning, uh, language learning. So let's, um, because of time, uh, I, I head quickly to um, the slides. So let's go right away to the slides. Now we want to look at Bluetooth speakers to start with. Uh, Bluetooth speakers, they are smart Bluetooth speakers uh, have become uh, common in our markets and they are affordable these days, uh, depending on your location and region. Well, basically, I think uh, here in Nigeria, it's proliferated. Our market is everywhere. I think it's 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 affordable. Uh, likewise, I want to believe it's the same thing too in uh, most African uh, countries. And then, yeah, uh, this tool is very very vital, especially to a language teacher, and they can be used for playing audio content. Uh, podcasts, videos to develop listening and speaking skills of our students and recording of literary contents like poems, rhymes, storylines, you know, and, and so on. So as a literary teacher, I mean, as, as, as a language teacher, this is a very vital tool to carry to the classroom and bring to bear experiences uh, that will go a long way in your learner. You see, tools and gadgets like this can be a game changer in the classroom, especially when you, you're talking about listening skills, the ability of your students to listen probably to uh, a comprehension or, or, or a pre-recorded content, and then for them to be able to regurgitate what they listen to. Uh, so these things, uh, these gadgets are very, very pivotal to uh, their learning. So we'll go to the next, we'll head straight to the wireless display, uh, which is uh, a, a new technology to a lot of us. It's really not accessible, but surprisingly, if you have a laptop and your laptop runs on Windows 8 above, I think 8.1 above, if you, your laptop runs on Windows 8.1 or it runs on Windows 9 uh, or Windows 10, or Windows 11 upward, then you have this technology already integrated in your laptop, which you can use in the classroom to share contents from your phone uh, to the screen of your laptop to show uh, students around in the classroom. Probably you're showing them charts or you're showing them whatever content it is that is on your phone. You can actually share the screen of your phone with your laptop. Now let's look at the video. It's it's actually a 30 seconds video uh, by Intel. Intel is actually the inventor of wireless display, which is the YD. And then eventually it was upgraded to Miracast. Let's look at the video and see what it has to say. Watching what's on your laptop on your big screen TV has never been easier. Introducing Intel Wireless Display. Transmit what's on your laptop to your TV without wires. It's easy. Just launch Intel Wireless Display from your laptop to see content on your TV from your hard drive, your home network, or the internet. For example, enjoy your favorite videos. Listen to music. Share photos. Watch streaming or downloaded movies in standard or full screen mode. It's easy to see what's on your laptop on your TV screen with Intel Wireless Display. Just look for this icon on compatible devices. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's, that's, uh, that's wonderful. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, you can see from the video that uh, actually uh, you have, um, you have, so let me share my slide uh, all over again so I can go ahead. Thank you. So, like we saw from the video, uh, we discovered that, um, 
sorry. Oh, okay. So for, like we saw from the video, we discovered that actually YD means wireless display. It's actually similar to uh, Wi-Fi. We're all acquainted with Wi-Fi, which is a wireless fidelity. But uh, this was an invention that came much more like in, two, uh, I think 2006 precisely. That's when y YD was invented by Intel. And eventually they kept improving on it until we have what we have today as Miracast. Most of these technology are integrated in most projectors that are recent projectors you buy, recent uh, smart televisions you buy, they, they have wireless display. And then you uh, the laptops we have, if it's running on Windows 8.1 above, it's, it has that integrated in it, which gives us uh, opportunity as language teachers to be able to leverage sharing content from our phone uh, to our laptops and you can show it around to your students and really, these technologies have a long way to go. Uh, basically, we know it's not everybody that is accessible to them, but just to let us know that these possibilities exist. And as a teacher, you want to take your, your teaching and learning to uh, you know, experience to the next level, you can actually leverage on these technologies. They are, they are user-friendly. And you may want details, much more details on how to use them. You can check them out on Google you see as uh, uh, directives on how you can go about them. Like you can see on the screen, you can see Chromecast, you can see uh, for people using Apple devices, they call it as AirPlay. Uh, if you use a Samsung device, they call their own screen mirroring, I think, screen mirroring. Uh, those, the other people that use uh, uh, and other Android devices, you see a cast, you see features like cast, which you can use to cast the screen of your phone, you know, to do screens and then you get to share whatever you have with your students. So just to let us know for knowledge sake that these technologies are with us and they are right with us, you can actually leverage on those advantages and see how you can bring them to bear in the classroom to make your uh, uh, teaching more effective. And then we go straight uh, to Miracast. And Miracast actually, like I said, version 3.5 was upgraded from YD. And then it was a stand. It was a standard that was supported on Windows 8.1, 10, and after that, it was developed by Intel. It, it's recommended for businesses, you know, and users utilize Intel Unite as a platform to collaborate with Miracast. So, uh, it's glad most teachers these days use smartphones. So, and our smartphones are running on Android operating systems that are far above 4.2. So once your Android is above 4.2, then it's definitely compatible uh, to, uh, to have uh, the Miracast integrated in it, which can help enable you to share your screen you know, with your students uh, on your laptops and on bigger screens. Then you can, you can stream on TVs, projectors, uh, multimedias, and players. Then you look at, uh, for those of us uh, who, you must have seen maybe devices like this. Uh, these days, these are all, all other, you know, um, other uh, div uh, uh, Miracast devices that you can plug in. Even if your television is not adaptable to have the technology, you can just plug this to the HDMI port and automatically you'll be able to share your screen with uh, your telly. You can share your screen as well too with your projector that doesn't have the Miracast integrated in it. If you have any of these, uh, you can see on the screen, you can plug it, the USB port or the, uh, the HDMI port, and then it suddenly makes your projector adaptable to have the Miracast so you can use it in the classroom. Then uh, those using Apple devices, uh, they have, well, they, they, it's a rival to the Miracast, which you call the Air, uh, Apple AirPlay. Uh, it's it's uh, an amazing device for those who have access or are accessible to it. It, 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 it can really be very effective and it can make teaching and learning interesting much more for our students, which, uh, so just for knowledge sake, just letting us know that these technologies exist and we can actually leverage on them. Now let's look at the social media in, in teaching language. I'd like to hear from every one of us now. Uh, basically, like uh, in this side of my location here, uh, every average teenager you see on the street, 
these days they have smartphones. They have access to these devices. Based about eight out of 10 teenagers hold at least one social media account. Either they have uh, Facebook or Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, you know. You see in our classroom, you can also take an evaluation of your class demography. Maybe you just ask any of them with any social media account. You'll be surprised, you know, the, the feedback you will get. That tells you that as you as a language teacher, you can actually leverage on disadvantages, you know. Students like things that are new. They like new innovation. They like things that are trendy. So if as a language teacher, if you make yourself, you equip yourself uh, with this knowledge and see how you can take advantage uh, of these advantages in class to use their social media accounts as a, a platform where you can teach them uh, to learn, like in primary schools, in secondary schools, you find students. And, and why much attention these days are being paid to the negative effect of social media, including cyberbullying. They could also be the positive side as well too. So I'd like to hear from every one of us right now. Uh, please, I'd like you to head right away again to the chat box. I, I like this to be much more interactive. I, I like to hear your feedback. What do you use? Um, I mean, do you use any social media at the moment with your students? I'd like to hear from us. Uh, so head to the social, to the chat box. I'll uh, be looking forward to your feedback. Mm, bank colleague Bimiga, absolutely. She said she's available of this technology that will probably limit the usage of the classroom. Okay, so let's hear much um, feedback. Oh, someone said he uses WhatsApp. AG said WhatsApp. Uh, AJ said he uses Google. CA uses WhatsApp. Oh, great. TJ uses WhatsApp. VM uses Zoom. Oh, great. OM, they use much more Edimo. Edimo. Wow, that's that's amazing. Um, you, you said they use WhatsApp for quiz. Okay, they use WhatsApp, Google Classroom. Okay, they use uh, WhatsApp as well, Zoom. Uh, edu, ed, okay, okay, the Edu page. Oh, great, great. Uh, another person, MS said they use Google Meet. Oh, that's great. So another person, EA, uses Google Classroom. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing feed, feedback. Uh, IP said they use WhatsApp. Oh, that's great. They use WhatsApp. And uh, uh, GM said, they sadly, that Edimo went commercial. Oh, OK. So they, they place a price <laughs> on, on using them. Uh, DM said they use WhatsApp as a, in group classes. Oh, that's great. And then uh, holiday, they said they become uh, a military academy. Okay. Wow, that's great. Um, UH said they use WhatsApp group. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so you get to put your assignments. You get to put um, <clears throat> passages, comprehensions. Oh, that's great. Poems. Uh, uh, music they could listen to and then you know synthesize uh, Ari said I deal with young learners and I don't use but they have experience so it means they use them at home oh that's great uh, MM said I use WhatsApp to teach listening and speaking wow that's great that's great that's great you see the 21st century is heading towards a direction that every teacher would need to upskill. Every language teacher will need to upskill. If you must be effective, if you must really capture uh, the essence of learning, teaching and learning amongst your students, then you must, you must, you must be with them. You must, you must understand what they like, uh, or, or the medium they prefer that you can that can make your delivery much more effective. And that's the essence of uh, this presentation to, 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 you know, to open our eyes to uh, advantages that we can actually leverage in the classroom. Oh, I can see TikTok. Oh, as they said, they use TikTok. Oh, and TikTok is the in thing right now. Snapchat, uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, Android phones. Oh, okay. From Iabo, uh, Telegram group for teachers. Oh, that's great. She said, most of my students who have Android phones are on Facebook. 
and uh, Snapchat, TikTok, and WhatsApp. Oh, that's great. You see, because of time, we head quickly uh, to our slide. Like I said, that um, disadvantages are uh, these are that is this is the future, and I want to tell every language teacher that you are welcome to the future. This is the future of learning. Uh, these things that we see that it's evolving by the day. And as a teacher, it's necessary you reposition yourself uh, as a 21st century teacher, looking that this is the future where learning is going to be. So eventually, it has a long way to go to how you as a teacher can upskill yourself to make yourself much more effective leveraging on disadvantages so uh let's go to the next slide uh we have what like for me you can do for, like what you are seeing in the classroom this is a whatsapp classroom for uh, my language teachers in my school uh government secondary school jua ss3 class uh, uh basically about 37 parents uh, are on whatsapp so and it so happened that uh, we we brought this matter just the way we are we are we are having a discourse right now. We brought it to the PTA meeting, and then you know the PTA the parents they 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 they, they, they bought into it. They said, oh okay, if learning can beyond the classroom can also be taken to uh you know the social media where these uh students are found and are busy at home. That's where you find them busy. So and. <laughs> With the support of the PTA, every parent was enjoined to release their smartphones like in at home for their children just for an hour or 30 minutes, depending on the time that uh, it's needed for the teacher to engage them. And then uh, they, they, they have access to these devices, which has made learning easier for, for me in my school. And where we put our comprehension passages, poems, short articles, and we also encourage the students to put in their own articles, uh, you know, depending on uh, the scenario in in their classrooms. And I ask them to do a voice note on those charts, either reading a passage or reading a comprehension, so I you know I can correct their sentences, you know, their pronunciations, uh, their, their reading skills and sometimes vice versa to correct their listening skills. So these are ways we can actually uh, leverage on this advantage. This is my own experience I'm sharing with us. I believe you have your own experience. I heard someone said they use TikTok. I think, uh, is it MA said they use TikTok? You see, this peculiarity of our experiences, bringing to bear in our classroom has a long way uh, to go to, you know, make our teaching and learning very, very effective. So uh, we head straight to the implication for teachers. Now, as a teacher, the new demand for knowledge economy imply a different role for language teachers like we, we saw earlier. We said teachers will need to acquire new skills. And that is the essence of these digital literacy uh, training skills. It's, 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 it's necessary that you are going to your classroom with something new from here, something you can improve upon uh, that you have not been doing that you can actually take advantage from uh, what we've discussed here today. We can, like we said, that it's actually the focus is not ICT skills, but how we can integrate technology and education with margin views on the pedagogy. You talk about the methodology, curriculum development, and education management. And then the language teacher should, like we said, should stop teaching and start facilitating. Uh, we, we've seen this already. We talked about the jobs of the future. These are necessities why it's necessary that uh, we bring technology to our classroom. Now, summing it up, uh, you can see that harnessing technology to transform teaching and learning will ultimately produce a better informed citizenry and a more skilled workforce eventually. So my final thought, if you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way, according to Napoleon Hill. Uh, I believe these thoughts uh, you can take 
can carry on with this to uh, your classrooms. Uh, these are references of um, of of the excerpt of everything we have put together in the slides. And I just want to say thank you. It's such a privilege uh, to have me this evening um, present to you. So thank you. Thank you very much, Abaji. Well done and uh, yes, excellent timing. Uh, you couldn't have timed it better. Uh, so we do have a couple of minutes left for, for questions. If anybody has any quick questions, just to remind people that next fri Friday on the Telegram discussion group, Abaji will be there, I'll be there, other people will be there. And we'll just carry on talking about the, the issue. So if anybody wants to learn more about the technologies that Abhaji's uh, talked about um, or talk about some of the uh, their own experiences, then, then join us next Friday. But anybody got any specific questions, you can put up a hand. You can actually try sound if you want. We've got a couple of minutes here. So James. Let's put his hand up. Do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, I can see my big colleague, yeah, everyone... Bimiga. Bimi, Bimi, yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, good evening. This is James from um, Bayasa State. Well done, Mr. Obaji. A very good delivery there. I, I want to say, I want to say I'm a bit jealous for this presentation tonight. <laughs> um, I've observed that in most cases, British Council often focuses on the English teaching uh, as a subject. Well, what about other subjects? Is it that the British Council is not interested in giving this kind of training to teachers who are involved in teaching other subjects? Why always? English language. Why? I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think I think I think that's the question for me. Uh, and be, I'm I'm actually happy to uh, I'm actually happy to reply uh, because um, you know the webinars these these webinars are actually part of uh, our project that support you know teachers of English you know uh, just just to be uh, uh, just just a similar like this. So we, we we actually support teachers of English. So obviously, uh, you can see that the majority of the work work that we do, you know, at, is is actually intended for teachers uh, of of English. But we have other projects uh, in uh, in um, especially in Nigeria. We have other projects that also support teachers who you know who teach different subjects as well. I hope I answer uh, I've answered your question, James. Yes, yes. Thank you. You you've done Welcome. that. Thank you. Bye. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. All right. I mean, I would also comment that that uh, that I mean, in many ways, as Abaje has has argued, that these are the sorts of skills that language teachers uh, and other teachers, not just language teachers, and many teachers use different kinds of technology in, in their classroom these days. So this kind of discussion could be relevant uh, to, to many others. So I think yeah, that's important. Okay. Thanks, James. I'm going to well, give. Good evening, the floor. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Ufoma. Okay, I just wanted to add to um, what Gary just said that the skills that have been taught here today are not just are not limited to English teachers. From here, I could actually use. I teach English language. I also teach geography and history in my class. I could use um, what he has taught here today to enhance, you know, classroom and um, 21st century skills in my classroom. So it's not just um, language teachers that are benefiting from this. That's, I wanted to add that. Then I want to ask, at the beginning of the lecture, um, Mr. Obaja, you said you were currently doing feature col um, sorry, classroom collaborations. That's one of my targets this year. Wow. And I'm looking for ways to do that. So I'm asking, how can I do that? I I, I don't know if there, if there is British Council doing something where classrooms can collaborate between different countries or within a country. I'm interested in that. Thank you. Oh, okay. Ufoma, that's interesting. Actually, um, 
you would have to uh i want to like to know your location uh what location are you hello Ufoma. i'd like to know your location sorry about that i'm i'm currently in abuja oh okay great so british council actually uh have the activities littered all across nigeria I, I likewise i believe most uh, english-speaking countries and uh, you would have to get in touch with their with with probably uh their office or any any contact at all but online as well i think there is a platform where you can actually uh, seek um exchange programs with other countries and i think they will pair you 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 they uh, you you would send i think a, an invite or so uh the plat that platform actually exists and then they can also the, the the British Council in your location can actually also pair you if you are interested uh, with other countries either in the UK or any English speaking country, either in Gabon or in Ghana or probably in the uh, in um, in India or any most of those English speaking countries anywhere where English is spoken, you can actually uh have exchange programs like that and it's sponsored by the british council like i told you it is uh, so far they have been sponsoring all our activities uh i think the last phase of the activity is right now that we're about to uh have sponsorship on is the reciprocal visit which we are looking forward to so uh ufoma i think you can actually leverage an advantage okay what i would do uh you 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 can Apart from uh, this program, you can reach out to me. Uh, reach out, look out for my name either on Facebook, on 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 uh, what do you call it, on um, LinkedIn. You can chat me up. Then probably I guide you on how you can go about that. So since that's thank what you so we're much, Mr. Badi. I would love that. I'll, yeah, I'll chat out them. Look for your LinkedIn and and on Facebook. I'll do okay. that. Thank you so much. Oh, all right. Thank you. Uh, just for general information, I mean, the project is called English Connects. Uh, so, uh, you know, so th th there has been quite a lot of activity around linking classrooms in that way. I'm going to take one final question from Ayabo, who is actually on the Telegram discussion group to make it fair. Um, so uh, she's asking there, uh, how, how do you curtail excesses in, in social media? So if students are over enthusiastic or they, they they dominate or they do improper things so they do things that that they shouldn't be doing on social media how do you manage how do you manage that in your classroom how do you get your students to do things in the right way so let's put it that way all right uh, uh reaching out to the to our audience in the telegram uh like sharing from my own experience okay sharing, oh okay sharing from my own experience i like i told you we had to commit the pta the parent teachers association uh to enjoin every parent to be a part of that program and this is what we do it's not like the parents release their devices to the students anytime no we 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 actually like like i told you we have a whatsapp group a, a, a medium of communication with the parents and as well the medium of communication with the uh, students in the classroom so if for example i give my students assignment today and it's meant to be from 7 pm to uh, 8 pm so i i would let the the uh, through the the whatsapp group of the parents i'll let them know that please from 7 pm to 8 pm I'll be, I'll be engaging my students so they can kindly release their devices and uh through that we've been able to actually check their excesses just to make sure and then the parents also check on them to see that they are actually participating in those activities that we do so that's how we've been able to uh, manage our excesses all right that's great thank you very much well I'm going to stop there for today um and but don't forget that next Friday uh, Abaje will join us again and we'll continue oh. uh, the discussion about these uh, fascinating topics. So you. thank you for sharing yeah. your ideas with us and thanks for the questions yeah. from the community. 
Um, and uh, please join, if you're not members already, please join the Telegram community. Uh, the link, I've put the link up on the chat. Steve has also put uh, a link to the form for feedback. If you are interested in giving some feedback, we'd like to hear from you, certainly, about mm. the, the, the talk. And that also links in to get you a certificate if you're somebody who likes to collect certificates. So thank you very much, Abaji, and thank you very much, Steve, for the uh, admirable chatting within Telegram. Um, and uh, we'll see you all hopefully uh, next week and enjoy the rest of your evening and weekend, or what's left of the weekend, Sunday. All right, so bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>